Hello everybody, hope you're all well. Welcome back to my channel. I'm back with another DIY video for you today and today we're going to be doing some Poundland DIY. So everything that I'm going to be using for the DIYs in this video has come from the land where everything used to be one pound but not anymore. Just in case you don't have a pound land near you depending on where you're watching from, most of the things that I'm using in these videos can be picked up from a budget store or you may already have some similar things around your home so hopefully you'll be able to recreate all of these yourself on a budget and a couple of these are anthropology inspired as well so a couple of the pieces that I'm going to be making today I have taken inspiration from anthropology and tried to recreate some fab pieces that I spied on their website so before we get cracking if you're new here do click subscribe I post new videos every single week and don't forget you can always catch me over on Instagram it's Mr Carrington I also have my home account where I share pictures of my home and any DIYs that I do and that one is Mr. Carrington home and it would be great to see you over there. So let's get started with the DIYs. The first one that we're going to be doing is this fabulous bowl. I spied this on the Anthropology website and I thought we could definitely have a go at creating this one for a fraction of the cost. In fact, this one just cost me one pound plus the string and twine that I'm using for it. And that one pound was for this plastic picnic bowl. I started off by marking out where my holes would be using a permanent marker pen. And then I took a drill bit. This is actually for ceramics. I got it from Amazon. I'll link it in the description box for you. And then added some masking tape to the bowl just to prevent any cracking. I went around and drilled all of the holes on the marks. Next I took some of this twine that I got from Lidl and using some hot glue I just positioned it on the edge of the bowl just to secure the first piece in place. Then I took some of this string that I also got from Amazon which I'll also link for you and took sections one for each hole and knotted the twine into position, just using a single knot. I went all the way around doing this with lengths of the string and then continued round until I had four layers of the twine and then I secured each piece of the string in a double knot. I threaded it back through on itself and then tied it in a double knot on the inside of the bowl if that makes sense. Here's a better angle so I'm taking it through and knotting it off on the inside with a double knot before snipping it off with the scissors. And here's how it turned out. So for the next one, I really wanted to recreate one of these round rattan style shelves. I've seen them in quite a few homeware stores and they are quite pricey and I particularly liked this one from Anthropology. So I used that as a bit of inspiration. And when I was in Poundland, I spied some children's hula hoops, which I thought would be absolutely perfect for this. I would demonstrate the hula hooping, but these ones are a little bit too small for me. That's my excuse anyway. I started off using one of these decking tiles. I think these are such good value for one pound and I used a chisel to take it apart. It came apart quite easily and I took four of the slats to make the shelves. You could use some wood if you have some lying around but I just wanted to make sure everything was from Poundland for this DIY. Next up I took two of the children's hula hoops and used the hula hoop to measure out how wide I wanted the shelves so I just marked those off with a permanent marker pen 
and then I sawed those off to the correct size for my shelves. Next I took some sanding blocks just to make sure the edges were nice and smooth. You can pick up all of this stuff in the DIY section. Then it was time to lay out some paper before gluing the slats of wood together using some wood glue. So I just picked this up in my local hardware store, just some general wood adhesive and used that to glue the pieces of wood together. As I say, you could use some pieces of wood that you may find lying around at home or you could salvage some instead so you don't have to go through this part of the process. Next up, I took some of this sticky backed vinyl and removed the sticky labels from the hula hoops. Then I cut some thin strips of the vinyl and started to wrap it around the hula hoops on a diagonal line to make sure that it would continue wrapping around the hula hoop. I kept going peeling off the backing as I went along and smoothing out any air bubbles as I went along to try and make it as smooth as possible and then continued with a new strip every time it ran out again making sure that it went on at a diagonal so that it continues to move forwards and not just wrap around itself. I hope I'm explaining this okay just make sure you've got that diagonal going on and it should continue to cover the hula hoop. and several more strips of the sticky back vinyl later, the hula hoops were completely covered. Next up, I laid the shelves down onto some more of the vinyl. You can see I used the masking tape just to make sure that glue was setting nicely. Then I peeled off the backing and wrapped the vinyl around the shelves, making sure there was no air bubbles as I went along before trimming that off. And then I just used a drill and some screws to attach the hula hoop to the shelves. I just did this by eye, but you could measure this if you want a perfect finish, but I just thought we'd wing it, you know me. So I did that on each of the shelves, a screw in each before flipping it over and attaching the other hula hoop to the front. Next up, we have this Quicker Chips. This makes superb oven chips, but we're using it for the DIY to give the rattan effect on the sides. Although I may have to invest in another to make some very crispy oven chips. Let's not get distracted. I cut the eyelets off to make sure it could sit nice and flat before holding it against the sides of the shelf to measure how wide I wanted it and then trimmed it to size. Now this is very satisfying. I thoroughly enjoyed cutting this. I don't know why but it was very enjoyable. Next up, I measured it to get the length correct and trimmed it before adding some hot glue to hold it into position. More satisfying cutting. If you have a go at this, you'll know exactly what I mean before I glued on this section. And then I took some more of the string or baker twine to start weaving it around the hoop to secure it into place. So this is already held by the glue and actually you probably don't need the glue if you are going to do this technique. You could just hold it into place while you do this but I thought the glue would just help me along a little bit. I found that the string was fraying a bit so I added some masking tape onto the end which created kind of like a needle which made it much easier to thread through the quicker chips or the mesh or the rattan darling, whatever we're gonna call it. <laughs> it made it much easier and I secured it by knotting it on itself and securing it with a bit more hot glue. And here it is, I hope you like it. And for the last one, which you might be able to spot in the background here, I just thought we'd do this one as a little bonus. This one's really simple to do. You don't need any paint. So hopefully this is something that you can recreate for your home or even your garden as well. I think this one would look fab outdoors. So we're starting off with one of these metal tea light holders with the leaf design. And after removing the label, which we love doing, said no one ever, actually this one came off okay so I'm not going to complain. I used the ceramic drill again. It went through this really easily, so I just drilled through the middle of the tea light holder to make a hole in the base, 
and then took one of these garden lanterns and removed the light bulb part. So I cut the label off and then unscrewed the light bulb. Once that was off, I was able to thread the LED light through the metal tea light holder and I added some hot glue to the top of the lantern to secure that into position. Then I popped some more glue inside, sorry for the bad angle but essentially this is going to secure the light bulb part back in once we threaded the LED into it. And to hang it up, I'm using one of these shepherd's hooks. You get two for one pound, what a bargain. And this is how it turned out. So there we go, I really hope you enjoyed these DIYs. Let me know in the comments down below which one was your favourite. And if you have a go at making any of these, do tag me in your pictures over on Instagram. It's Mr Carrington or Mr Carrington Home. I would absolutely love to see how you've got on. If you're new here, do click subscribe and hit the notification bell for new videos every single week. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.